Hello, and thank you for joining us for this Spotify for Artists Masterclass. My name is Brian Johnson. I'm on the music team at Spotify, and I'm working with you, the artist community, and your representatives to help you navigate Spotify, find and develop your fan base, and put you in the best possible position to set yourself up for success. This masterclass is being filmed from here, the power station in New York. It's an incredible studio space that's hosted so many artists over the years, from David Bowie to Madonna. And later, we're going to be heading to the Spotify Mateo studio over in Los Angeles, where we've recently hosted artists including Zara Larson, Japanese Breakfast, and Phineas as well. We've put these masterclasses together to introduce you to the different ways in which you can broaden your listeners and your fans all around the world. We use these sessions to give you some insights into who we are and how we work. And we like to take a look at some of the trends that we're seeing globally. In other masterclass episodes, we've covered topics including playlists and music discovery. We've looked at creative collaboration across borders and the different ways to make money on Spotify from royalties through to merchandise and ticketing. In this episode, we're going to be honing in on Campaign Kit, a suite of tools for artists and music marketers, bringing together playlist pitching, marquee, and discovery mode, all of which you may be familiar with, as well as a brand new marketing tool we're rolling out called Showcase. To talk us through these features and how they're actually used, we're going to be joined by two very special guests, Susie Rue from Venice Music and Mira Brock from M Theory. So why are we launching Campaign Kit? Well, for as long as the record the music industry has existed, a big challenge for artists and their teams has been finding new listeners and keeping hold of them as lifelong fans. At Spotify, we hear feedback every single day about the challenges of spending money on campaign tools that aren't specifically intended to be used for music. Things like social media and display ads, paid search, out of home, opaque influencer programs, and more. At Spotify, we are uniquely positioned to help solve this problem. Over the past few years, we've been listening to your feedback and investing our time and resources into building campaign tools that are made for music, with the aim of making them intuitive, easy to use, and with measurements and outcomes that make sense to artists and their teams. Across all of our campaign tools, you reach the right music listeners based on the streaming activity, you reach them right at the moment when they're listening to music, and you always get full reporting on exactly what listening activity your campaign drove. Campaign Kit brings the tools we've launched over the past few years into one place, and I'm really excited to walk you through it right now. Okay, let's begin by taking a look at what's included. First up is Playlist Pitching. This is a completely free tool within Spotify for Artists, and it enables all artists and the teams to pitch an upcoming unreleased song to our global team of playlist editors. These are people curating playlists that you might recognize, such as Rap Caviar, Planet Rave, and Mood Booster, to name just a few. You can share key information with us about your release, such as genre, instrumentation, who you made it with. The more information we receive, the better our editors can understand the context of the song and help to find the right playlist for it. Now, a useful reminder with playlist pitching, to give your track the best chance of getting playlisted, we recommend pitching your song at least seven days in advance of it being released. This also ensures that we add your pitched song to your followers' release radar playlists, and you can pin it to your This Is playlist if you're eligible for one. When you get placed on a playlist, you can see how many listeners and streams it drove in the playlist section in Spotify for Artists. This reporting, it's super, super valuable. Playlist pitching is one way that you can amplify your reach within Spotify's programming, and Discovery Mode is another. Discovery Mode is an audience development tool that can help get your music heard in personalized settings where audiences are most open to discovery. Today, a third of all discoveries on Spotify happen because of personalized listening. But until we developed this tool, personalized recommendations didn't account for an artist's preferences. There was no broad way for you to let Spotify know which tracks were a priority for you. With Discovery Mode, you can do exactly that. So how does it work? Artists and their teams tell us which tracks are important to them. This could be a track related to an album anniversary they're celebrating, or perhaps a viral cultural moment they're experiencing. Our system will then add that signal to the algorithms that determine those personalized listening sessions. This signal increases the likelihood of the selected songs being recommended in the personalized sessions, but it doesn't guarantee it. It only works if fans love it too. And we take note when a listener isn't engaging with a song, including those in discovery mode, and we factor this in when determining what to recommend next. A great thing with this tool is that it doesn't require an upfront budget. Instead, 
a commission is applied to recording royalties for streams within discovery mode contexts from the selected songs. All other streams remain commission free. Next is Marquee. Marquee puts your new release in front of listeners right when they open the Spotify app. It's a full screen sponsored recommendation. When a listener clicks on the Marquee, they're guided straight to your new release, which could be an album, EP, maybe a single, where they can easily listen and save to their library. Your marquee campaign can begin up to 21 days after release date, and you get to set the targeting and the budget. And finally, Showcase. Showcase is our newest sponsored recommendation that allows you to promote both new and catalog music anytime to listeners, right on Spotify's home. This one is different from marquee in that there is no time window in which you have to use it. Showcase can be tailored to your requirements through customizable campaign headlines, and in terms of targeting and, and who you can actually reach, Showcase's default targeting reaches listeners who are most likely to stream your music, including new listeners, or you can choose from a broad set of more specific targeting options, really depending on your marketing strategy. The real magic for Showcase comes in how you use the campaign headline, the targeting, and the music selection together strategically. Maybe you want to reach super listeners with your last single. So here you could use the releasing music soon headline to prime them for your next release. Or perhaps you want to promote your whole album to your light listeners with the getting buzz headline when one of your songs goes viral on social media. Or you may use the release anniversary headline with a classic album of yours to reactivate your previously active segments. There are loads of possibilities. So, playlist pitching, discovery mode, marquee, and showcase. These campaign kit tools are made for music, they provide detailed reporting to help you understand their impact, and they can easily be used together to help you achieve your goals. That was an overview from me, but to really understand how Campaign Kit works and to see the impact it can have, it's of course important to hear from those who are using it day to day in a practical setting with artists. Let's hear from two people at the forefront of music marketing, Susie Rue from Venice Music and Mira Brock from M Theory. Over to Susie and Mira. My name is Susie Rue and I'm the co-founder and president of a relatively new company called Venice Music, and we exist as a platform and a community to serve independent artists, to support them, to enable them, to empower them with tools, with strategy, and with marketing services. We work with artists of all genres um, and all sizes as well, literally from first singles to first body of work and genres like R&B, pop, hip hop, rap, all shapes and sizes, also from all around the world. My name is Mira Brock. I'm a director of marketing at M Theory. M Theory is a manager services company. We partner with artist managers to help out holistically across all facets of an artist's career with a specific focus in marketing and data-led strategic marketing. My day-to-day -day is working directly with artist managers alongside them. We are joining label calls. We are creating marketing plans. It really varies depending on the artists and what they have going on. My approach to music marketing, I feel like, has largely remained the same since the end goal is really the same of connecting artists with their fans. It's a huge challenge to figure out how to market across all the different channels and those channels specific needs and the, those channels audiences as well. Being able to hone in on where artists fan bases actively are consuming their music already and reach them there is the best approach. I think also we're used to measuring marketing campaigns with reach or impressions and clicks but I think it's hard to understand what those clicks actually mean unless they're really driving to fan connection. Um, and that's a hard thing to measure. How I think about approaching music marketing in 2023 is around three C's. And the first C is creativity. How can an artist and an artist team be uniquely creative in showcasing the talent, the authenticity, the full expression of that artist and the artist's music? Culture in that, you know, what cultures does this artist participate in, champion and show up for authentically? And then finally around commerce. We often don't like to talk about that because music is art and artists are creatives, but everyone has a budget, whether that budget is $100, $1,000 or $100,000. And we are in this 
to express that art to be sustainable commercially so that we can reinvest and create more art. To me, success is actual fan conversion. And Spotify is a unique marketing platform to me because listeners are already there to consume music. I think it's in fact, the opposite of social media marketing. For music marketing, to be able to reach listeners where they're already consuming music or going to discover music is such a huge advantage. When I think about uh, music marketing and deciding whether to have a local approach or a global approach, the answer is you really have to do both. You may see in your Spotify for Artists that you have listeners from all around the world. And so how do you make your marketing approach as broad as possible so that those listeners can have access and, and can get to know this new, new music as well. Spotify is super important for our artist development strategy just because of the really robust ecosystem of both like listeners and audiences, as well as tools and data that Spotify has enabled an artist and an artist team like us to um, dive into, understand, nerd out, and you know, be able to make decisions, have conversations, and pivot against. Campaign Kit includes marquee, showcase, discovery mode, and playlist pitching. I think combining all tools in the Campaign Kit um, is key to success. The goal with a lot of Spotify marketing tools is to bring listeners in closer to an artist so that they consume their entire catalog. So ideally, they might enter through a specific single or a marquee campaign for a single or discovering one song from an artist via discovery mode. But the goal and the hope is that they then stick around, engage with the profile, continue to follow the artist and ultimately become a real fan. Goth Fave is a really fascinating independent artist. He is based in Portland, Oregon. And a lot of his music, I think, reflects his lifestyle. He's a surfer, climber, very nomadic, lived half a year on a sailboat, sailing up and down the coast of California. We're continuing to build on his engaged fan base using all the tools at our disposal. And we're testing, we're learning, we're experimenting, we're seeing what works. We initially at M Theory, when we started to working together, dove into his data and streaming analyses and found that a majority of his listenership was actually on Spotify. And then within that, we found that a lot of his streams were coming from radio and autoplay sources. So we were able to kind of use the data that we were seeing on platform already based on how his music was already being consumed and then strategize around that. So we decided to run discovery mode and we also were able to run marquee campaigns in the hopes of reaching all of his listeners on Spotify with new releases. Initially for Discovery Mode, we started by opting in a lot of Goth Babe's catalog tracks. So the idea being we could give tracks that hadn't had as much focus during a campaign a bit of focus and see if it worked there. We decided to test it out for some of his more popular catalog tracks. One song in particular, Weekend Friend, was one of his most streamed songs on Spotify at the time. So Weekend Friend actually experienced a higher peak in daily streams after being opted into discovery mode than it had upon its release day. So it was completely given a second life. What was really exciting for Goth Babe's experimentation with discovery mode was that we actually saw nearly 300% radio and autoplay stream lift from an average across all the songs we submitted. So overall saw really strong results of his music really resonating in that space. For Marquee, it makes sense to run it for any focus track. But for Goth Babe, we kind of applied a specific broader strategy, which was actually just running Marquee for every single release, even if it was a smaller spend, with the idea being that it would function like a staircase of sorts. So with the first single, we'd bring in some new listeners who may or may not have streamed his last release otherwise. And then with the subsequent single, Hopefully those listeners that we brought in with the first single would already be served the new release via release radar or perhaps other more organic algorithmic sources. And then by the time we reached an EP or album release, we'd sort of subsequently been building 
more and more listeners with every marquee campaign and with every single release. By using those two tools in tandem with each other, we were able to consistently over the course of several months build his monthly listeners so that by the time we released his last EP, he had his highest level of monthly active listeners ever on the platform. For Showcase, the most exciting opportunity for me there was the ability to market a catalog release. Because we knew that Weekend Friend was one of Goth Babe's most popular tracks, and since it had performed so well in discovery mode, we decided to run a Showcase campaign for Weekend Friend with the header You Might Like, kind of building on Spotify's already great ability to predict what fans might like. And I think in our case with Weekend Friend, our hope was that we'd reach previously active listeners. We wanted to reach those listeners, bring them back into Goth Babe's ecosystem, and then hopefully be able to hit them with our next releases as a more engaged part of his audience segment. We started working with Twee in Q1 of 2021. Twee um, realized that she wanted to present a, a debut body of work, an EP called I Hope You See This. Artists and teams are every day learning how to use discovery mode for different use cases. And what we wanted to experiment with from day one is putting songs into discovery mode when there is heightened activity for an artist, whether that's songs from the past are building momentum and finding their audience and growing, or there is a project coming and the project will heighten the velocity and the momentum around an artist. When there's heightened activity, we should opt in to discovery mode to be able to reach the maximum audience possible. And from there, try to convert that audience into real fans. A brilliant strategic um, experiment in that we did see incredible growth and we continued to employ tools, other tools inside Campaign Kit like Marquee to then you know, remind the listeners that this project was out. It's such an exciting time to be in music and the technology that supports everyday habit and everyday behavior of like falling in love with your favorite music. There's probably not a better time than today to be an artist. And having the disposal and the accessibility to tools like Campaign Kit is an incredible way to grow, to strategize, to plan, to learn, and to really kind of make your place known in the world, in your world as an artist. I mean, it sounds cheesy, but the, the main tip that comes to mind is just to be authentic to your vision and, and use marketing to amplify that. I think... There's a lot of room for trying things out and seeing what works. As it pertains to music marketing, the best approach is just to be as strategic and goal-oriented as possible. You can't really manufacture a viral moment or control a campaign's success, but what you can do is set the strategy for it and continue experimenting based on the results and, and have fun with it. See what's working. And it's an exciting sort of adventure and journey to um, embark on. Thank you, Susie, and thank you, Mira. It's really powerful to hear how you've both used campaign kits as a key and integral part of the strategy to grow your artist fan bases, and also how those individual tools can sit side by side and actually complement one another. We would love for you to check out campaign kits. For more info on how to do this, just head to the URL that's on screen right now, and that'll take you directly to the campaign kit site. Okay, time to wrap things up. A big thank you for joining us for this episode. As always, we'd love to keep in touch through our socials. Keep an eye on those channels, as well as Spotify for Artists itself, for more on our masterclasses and other educational programs. I've been Brian Johnson. This has been a Spotify for Artists masterclass. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.